What's up guys, this is James Blonde, this time taking a first look at World of Warplanes from Wargaming.net, same guys that brought you World of Tanks, and in the future World of Warships. So I got a brief look at the game at this year's GDC Online, where I also learned that Wargaming throws some pretty crazy parties for their fans after conventions. Anyway, this game is an action MMO that takes place during the day and age that aviation made its biggest advancements. The game allows players to fly planes dating back to the 1930s and progressing into the late 1950s, from biplanes to early jet airplanes. And as I learned from talking to some of the developers at PAX Prime, these guys go through some extensive measures to get accurate details for the game, like attending air shows or having their engineers measure the real-life versions of the aircraft in the game, all the way down to the thickness of the metal. So let's get into the game. So just like World of Tanks, you start off in the hangar. And right off the bat, you have three Tier 1 planes to choose from. You've got a USSR plane, you've got a German plane, you've got a USA plane. Now I've got four because I researched and unlocked my tier 2 plane which is the P-23. So the preset configurations that we're taking a look at here are basically a bundled upgrade packages for each one of the aircrafts. These configurations consist of upgrades to the airframe, engine, and weapons on the plane. You can see the increase in characteristics on the right and you can also visually see the change on the plane itself. Now these are just preset configuration. There are plenty of ways to upgrade individual planes and doing so will allow you to pick the best configuration for combat and playstyle. Another cool feature is you can go ahead and make your plane a little bit more flashy by changing the paint scheme here. And let's see what we've got. I'm going to go with the camouflage. I really like that look. That looks nice. Now let's see what we can change on the nose. And that's kind of cool. I like that. The lightning bolt. It's nice. There's without. Uh, let's see here. I think I'm going to go back to that lightning bolt. That looks pretty sick. I'm going to keep that. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> that makes it look mean. All right, what do we have under other? What is this? Mounted. Alright, well, I guess that's if I, if I had modifications. And speaking of modifications, I think I'm going to go ahead and upgrade my plane. Let's see here. The XP-23B gives you an upgrade on the engine and an additional machine gun. So it increases your hit points, but also increases your weight, of course. A little bit on the speed. Let's see here. Uh, the YP-23A is going to upgrade the engine again. Wow. And add an additional... Nope. Change the machine gun. Aha, so this, this loadout here will get me the 7.62 millimeter machine gun and the 12.7 millimeter machine gun. All right, go big or go home. We're going to go ahead and get that one. That's eh, kind of expensive, but screw it. I can afford it. Let's go ahead and get it. Yes. The done. Done. There's no turning back now, so we can check out. Let's get, let's get out here. Let's see what upgrades. So, yeah, you can actually see them on the plane. Man, I don't even know what that is, honestly. But it looks cool. So that, I guess, is my engine sticking out of the side. Very intimidating. Yeah, let's battle. I'm ready to, to kick some ass with this thing. So you can see that there's different types of aircraft in the game. You've got the fighter, you've got the heavy fighter, and you've got the attack aircraft. Now the fighter is going to be the lightweight plane that zips and zoom around. And it's going to use speed and, and agility to its advantage. That heavy fighter is going to be a little bit more on the heavier side, obviously. It's going to take more damage. It's going to be able to, to, to deal more damage. If you get in the crosshairs of this thing, you're going down. And the attack aircraft is going to be focused more on ground-based attacks. Ah, so the game has matched me with two, three, and four tier planes. So there's nothing too extreme that's going to just go in there and kick my ass. But it should give us enough challenge and variety we're looking for. So I have to say, I went out and bought a joystick for this game just because that's how I prefer to play it. I'm not, I'm not necessarily recommending that you go out and buy a joystick, but you get to do things like this a lot easier. So I've macroed out my... Uh, views so that way if somebody's chasing me or anything like that I can kind of look around uh, it's not really going to give me any more of an advantage but it's a lot more fun to play just because that's how this game was meant to be played it's also how the guys at Wargaming had it set up at their booth the developers were using it that way so I would say if you're going to get into the game you're going to play a lot of it you know just think of it like kind of well, the game's free to play and if you're going to make a single purchase I would say spend 17 bucks on Amazon get you a joystick and make the game really fun or if you prefer, the game also supports gamepad, but otherwise, the default controls the keyboard and mouse. So the developers were telling me that they, they were trying to target towards a broad range of people. People that are interested in, uh, in the game as a simulator, and people that are just interested in the game as getting in there and actually just kicking ass. So what that means is, there's a lot of things you gotta monitor, but there's a lot of things you don't have to monitor. So for example, I'm throttling up to go a little bit faster here, and if I were to overdo that, my engine would overheat, I'd have to slow down drastically and let it cool down before I could throttle back up again. Uh, which can get you in a bad situation. So it looks like we've got some enemies off to the left here. I'm going to try to get the jump on these guys. All right, so I've locked into Mr. Kane. That's automatic, by the way. Oh, man, they collided. Holy crap. Way to take one for the team. All right, so we're going to target this guy here. 
And the way you do that, you're going to try to go for that little yellow circle that's right in front of them. That, that basically shows you where you need to aim in order to hit them at whatever distance they are. Ah, crap, I stalled. Yeah, so that's one <laughs> element that's in the game that's that's realistic that you have to deal with, of course. You can't just fly straight up. Uh, I'm going to get myself situated here. All right, I'm going to go down to get some speed. But you can see how huge these maps are. The developers are telling me they're like 40 times bigger than most of the uh, World of Tanks maps. So that's pretty crazy, like 200 square kilometers. All right, let's see if we can target this guy and go after somebody. Man, I'm already on fire. I've got 52% health, and you can see that down at the bottom in the center. 52 out of 70? That's like your hit points for damage. That's another thing you got to worry about here is, is uh, throttling too much. And uh, see, I've actually overheated. And so I'm going to throw it. It's going to make me throttle back down until so my engine uh, cools down. But I can't actually increase my speed right now. So I'm slowing down and I'm just kind of sitting sitting ducks for these enemies. Man, I'm really smoking. And that's another thing. The damage is not just cosmetic. So like I was trying to still target somebody there. And, I, and, and once I got hit, I kind of... I kind of fell down a little bit, so I'm having a hard time stabilizing my plane. So it makes it even harder to kill these guys. And this guy's going to fly right past me. Crap. So a lot of times you want to throttle down just to be able to turn a little bit. I learned that in Chuck Yeager's Air Combat like 20 years ago. So that's just another realistic aspect of the flight mechanics in the game. Uh, plus when you take the damage like that, you take more damage to your engine. You're obviously going to not be able to throttle as much. Your speed's going to decrease. Uh, I've got a little bit of damage on the right wing there, and I, I'm, I'm definitely feeling that. I'm at 11% health, so let's see. Oh, crap. And that's another thing is, is you know, there's definitely friendly fire in the game, and so th a lot of times your teammates are shooting in front of you, shooting at a target in front of you, and you're just caught in the middle, and uh, you're taking damage from your own teammates, and so you got to be careful with that. That's that's another realistic aspect of the game that can get you in trouble, and who knows? That may be why I'm dying right now, but I doubt it. I'm going to go after some of these guys. They're close to the ground. Maybe I can cause them to crash. Who knows? But yeah, you can see in the bottom center that my engine is taking the most damage there, so I'm, I'm not going near as fast as I could possibly be. Plus, if you haven't noticed, I've got the smoke coming out my ass, and uh, now I'm about to die. I've got 5% health on there, and somebody is targeting me because they know this. I'm going to turn around and see if I can't take them down. Just do something. I'll run into them if I have to. So now that both my wings are damaged and I'm struggling to gain altitude, I qualify as a kamikaze. I'm just not a very effective one. These guys are going so much faster than I am. I'm throttling all the way up and I can't break 160. So with the condition of my aircraft, it's going to make it a little difficult to target and follow these guys. The game does actually have a really cool targeting system. It's very basic, but it sort of targets the aircraft that's in front of you the longest, that's the closest to you as well, like this guy right here. Once he's targeted and he kind of shows up that little window, you can see the damage that you're doing to him like that. I just got him to the smoke right there. And his name is Smokey. Oh, man. Ah, it was going to happen sometime. Ah, crash in the water. Well, at least I didn't hit an aircraft carrier. That, I can imagine, would offend some people. <laughs> so I can imagine that they're probably trying to make the collisions in the game look a little bit more realistic than, the, than obviously what you just saw there. Because, I mean... You see how realistic the damage looks on this plane, like in the wing and whatnot, and, and that damage directly affects how the plane flies. So with as much detail as they put into that, it makes sense to make the collisions look a little nicer and, and probably add a little bit more physics to it, so that way when the two planes collide, they don't, they don't just drop straight down. So you can probably look forward to that. Just like they added in World of Tanks, now you can push tanks off of cliffs, but it took them a little while to add that, but they, I think they executed it really well. Oh, this guy needs to do... Oh, too late. Do a barrel roll. Ah, he can't help it now. He's going straight to the ground. He's on fire. It looks badass. See, when you add a nice explosion to it, it's pretty cool. Except the part where it looks like he just kind of stuck into the ground. Even spectator mode can be fun to watch. Well, right, let's head back to the hangar and see if we can fly another plane, another battle, see if we can kill some people. Yeah, so unfortunately, I'm going to have to drop down to my P-12, which is my Tier 1 plane, but that's all right. You'll be able to tell the differences between the speed and whatnot, on, and, and obviously the, uh, the damage that I deal with my guns on this Tier 1 plane, but it'll be all right. Oh, cool. We got in fast. Uh, looks like we're going through like a desert-style El Halif, which that sounds familiar. That may be a World of Tank. I think it is, actually, a World of Tanks map. Oh yeah, that's another thing I was going to mention in case you're wondering. The game does have a tutorial. In fact, you have to play it before you get to battle. It teaches you how to fly and it, gets to, it, it really shows you the different uh, class airplanes and it makes, you, it makes you fight bots and things like that. But it, the cool thing is that you get to be the bomber class for a little bit and uh, shows you how the targeting system works 
for the bomber. Basically, you switch views and uh, you target ground objects and get to bomb them. It's pretty badass. Also, in case you're wondering, this is always how you'll start out the match. So just like this, you're gonna uh, you're gonna start off flying. You're never gonna have to take off or land. That's what they, the developers mentioned because they said it. They said that that would just be too challenging. I mean, what if you got you know eight or nine kills and you have to go and and, and then land afterwards and you just plow right into the ground? That would suck. So again, another advantage to having a joystick is that you have a lot more control over, say, like the throttle and even the rudder on the plane. You can make those little adjustments by twisting the joystick, and it's already set up to do that. But you can also even go beyond that. Like I macroed out my map. It's a certain button that I've got on there. I've got a button to fire rockets. I've got a button to drop bombs. Obviously, if I had those things, then I would show you. But uh, I've got it set up for that way. And when you're a bomber, you actually have to switch views to use the bombs, and so I've even got a, a macroed out button for that. Alright, so I'm going to target this guy and see if I can't take this guy on. Hopefully he's flying right towards me. That'll be easiest to shoot him. I'm going to try to shoot him now, but I think he's a little too far. Yeah, he is. So if basically, if he if you can't see the little circle in front of him, then they're a little too far to shoot. Now we can see it. Now we can start targeting him and see if I can't lead him on. Plus we can see if he's taking damage. He'll flash white a little bit if he's taking damage. But I've got somebody to chase now. Now, if you're playing World of Warplanes because you're a World of Tanks fan, you're, there's there's some things you gotta understand. There's gonna be a lot of difference, and and I know you know obviously there's a difference between planes and tanks. That's obvious. But what I'm talking about is that the playstyle in World of Tanks is a lot slower, and and there's a lot more strategy involved than um, World of Warplanes. Like here, I'm just flying around trying to shoot people. I don't really have much of a strategy. I can understand maybe later on you can get more strategy involved, but like say in World of Tanks, you get you. You get on chat with your company and you say, hey, there's a heavy tank over there, and you organize a strategy to take that tank out. Where this, you, you just fly around, there's a lot of people, and you see, uh, you might see a bomber or something like that, and you realize that the bomber is going for a target, and you might group together your squad to, to uh, attack that bomber, but for now, it seems like it's a little bit harder to establish team-based gameplay in this, because most of the time you're just flying around looking at targets, and if you lose that target, you just go to a different target. Now, I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but I'm just saying that if you're coming for World of Tanks, it's just going to be a completely different feel in terms of team-based gameplay. I'm not saying that it doesn't exist. It's just different. Alright, looks like I've got a potential target here, so I'm going to try to take this guy out. Hit him once. Ah, uh, hit him twice. Mmm, three times. Alright, so I'm going to throttle down here to try to take this turn a little faster. That is a tip there. I've noticed that a lot of people don't utilize their, their throttle capabilities. Maybe because they're not using a joystick. But I learned that in Chuck Yeager's Air Combat. If you know what I'm talking about, that game was back in like 91, it's so awesome, way ahead of its time. Alright, so I have too much throttle, too much throttle, that's not good. You can throttle down if you're catching up to these guys and kind of stick behind them, that's kind of key. Throttle control is real important when you're following somebody or if you're going to make a turn, oh crap, what the hell? No, 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 don't hit me, oh my gosh, to see that was a teammate there, then I don't think they meant to do that, that was nuts. That was skill or accident, one of the two, Jesus. So, yeah, throttling down will get you in trouble, too, but... BOOM! Headshot! Oh, crap! That was nice! It's like the only shots I fired and killed his ass. I think it was the same guy I was targeting earlier. What you got? What you got? Guys, you don't realize how uh, difficult that is until you play the game. It's not that I haven't got a kill before, it's just, it's hard. <laughs> and that, I made it look really good, and I also made it look really easy. Alright, so I have my next victim right here. So this is where I'm going to try to get right behind him and I'm going to throttle down a little bit. So right here, I'm going to throttle down and it's going to kind of slow him down and keep him right there. I, I hit him, now he's maneuvering. He knows I'm right behind him. So yeah, there's a considerable distance between the plane that I'm playing now and the one that I used earlier. But you still, you can see that there's, you can still do a lot with a tier 1 plane. So you're not like given a crappy plane in the beginning and then have to deal with that plane until you unlock the other ones. You get a nice plane in the beginning. Like, I, I really enjoy this plane. I'm doing better with this plane than I was with my upgraded tier 2 plane. So, yeah, there are things to shoot at on the ground. Otherwise, the bombers would have nothing to bomb. Like this observation post, for example. I'm sure if you destroy this, it will do something to benefit you. Maybe mess up the, uh, the mini-map for the enemies or something. Oh, crap, I'm getting really close to that. I don't want to hit the tower. <laughs> Holy crap, I think I got, like, 80 feet above the ground on that one. Jeez. But yeah, if I was a bomber, then I would be able to take that out in like one shot, so no big deal. And I'm sure different structures take different amounts of damage. Like if I were to shoot that, like an aircraft carrier or something like that, it's going to take a lot more to kill it. I probably can't even do hardly any damage to it as an attack fighter plane. But Unless, of course, you know, you did you went all kamikaze on the thing, then you might be able to take it out that way. I don't know. Holy crap, our enemies are way out there. What the hell? 
Oh, that's because there's only two of them. It's four of us against two of them. They're just running away. That's crappy. Uh, this may take a bit to catch up. So, for your in-flight commentary, I've got to hand it to Wargaming for taking the approach of the simulator experience combined with the arcade-style matches. The game seems to be set up so that it's accessible, so that anyone can pick it up and play, and at the same time, it appeals to the players that really want the detail and accuracy that the simulator provides. And I'm going to start shooting at this guy soon, because he's getting closer. I can see him. I can see his beady little eyes. Yeah, so I've established that upgrades make a huge difference. I mean, obviously, just this is a tier 1 plane, and I don't have any upgrades on it. It's The cruising speed is not even as fast as the, the near-death speed of my tier 2 upgraded plane. Yeah, buddy, just turn right into my fire. That's what I want. <laughs> Holy crap, <laughs> that was really close. If I was going any faster, we probably would have collided. No doubt about that. Oh, man, throttle down a turn, but I'm, oh, I'm getting a little close to the... Whoa, another one. Jeez, how close can you get? Come on, man. I should not be alive. <laughs> We're 85% advantage. Alright. So that means that if they don't kill me or my teammates, then uh, at least one of us, because it looks like they're 3 to negative 1, because somebody crashed, then we will win by having the advantage. And, which is cool because, you know, it eliminates those long, drawn-out games. And there it is. And we won, and here you get to see the stats of the game just like you do in World of Tanks. Wow, I've got 6,125 credits times two just for killing those two people. That's a pretty good payout. Well guys, that's World of Warplanes for you. The amount of realism that Wargaming puts into their games is fantastic. I can't imagine how the game is going to look a little ways down the road, like say at Patch 8.0 for example. <laughs> it seems like they've got something really neat, but if they wanted to they could really run with it and make it awesome and successful like World of Tanks. So if you're looking for more information about World of Warplanes, or World of Tanks for that matter, you can always check out the game profile slash preview at MMOHUD.com. And that's it for me. I'm James Blonde. See you out there, gamers.